Hey, this is Anthony from Zola TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Scorpion Exo R2000 helmet, available at RevZilla.com. So a while back you saw us take a full run through on a pre-production prototype on the Exo R2000. We now finally have our hands on the full bore production model. And remember, the Exo R2000 from Scorpion from a positioning standpoint is their first foray into a full bore race helmet. Developed with MotoGP riders, you see 17 riders currently wearing this bad boy on the track in the on the circuit led by Alvaro Batista. Again, developed over a multitude of years in that three to $400 mark, you're really seeing technology here on the R2000 that we haven't seen anywhere else from Scorpion. Different shell profile, different shell composite materials, really a mixture of features and a mixture of protective elements that are gonna allow this helmet to perform on the racetrack for sport-oriented riders and specifically racers at a very, very high level. Now, before I dive in and walk through some of the nuances on the helmet, Let's talk briefly about the fit side of things. It's really going to be that intermediate oval head shape from Scorpion, but it has more of a race fit to it. Remember, they're using six different EPSs with four different shell sizes. So what they've done is they've designed a very lightweight and compact helmet that in my opinion has a very nice race fit to it. When I say race fit, it's just snug and encompassing. It's also, it also happens to be very light around that three pounds, eight ounce mark. And remember, if you're concerned about the fitment, if you have a wider head, if you're not sure it's going to fit you, remember we will ship for free. Don't worry about it. And I'd love to hear your gut reaction as we walk through the XOR2000. Click here, subscribe to us at Revzilla TV on our YouTube channel. Leave your comments, your questions, and your feedback. So starting with the outside and working our way in, this is the first time we're seeing the TCT shell from Scorpion. It's actually a five-ply shell comprised of fiberglass, aramid, and organic resins in a five-ply, almost sandwich-style configuration. So again, low profile, strong, very, very lightweight. They're not using regular fiberglass. They're not using a polycarb. Again, this is the big step forward. This is the only shell from Scorpion we're seeing use the TCT. And I already told you they're doing a multitude of shapes. You know, if you think about where this sits in the food chain, from here, you can think about some of the specific features, but really you'd be stepping down into something like the XO, the XO1100, which is much more of a sport, but all around universally fit helmet, where this guy is designed to be in the three quarter, in the tuck with your chin on the tank. Looking at some of the other external features here, a multitude of internal of, of external vents, so you're going to see six intake vents, dual channel on the chin, dual channel on the brow, and then you have two channels here on the chimneys that have two positions as well. But the nice part about this helmet is they're promoting a tremendous amount of airflow, especially in that aggressive race position. But moving along to the back, you're going to see this nice in integrated spoiler to provide great stability, but you have 10 exhaust ports. So you have two on top, two on the sides, you have two down here below. There's a multitude of exhaust ports that are now sucking that air in a very active active fashion out of the back. And remember, there's no, there's no positioners so that you're able to open or close the vents. They're going to be always on, but again, Scorpion has designed this helmet for the racer or rider that's going to be working hard, very actively riding their bike. And they know that getting that airflow promoted through the helmet, and again, in conjunction with MotoGP riders that were seeing a multitude of different climates as they raced around the world, they wanted to give this helmet the maximum amount of ventilation flexibility. Also with regard to the shell and the new aerodynamic profile, we took this guy out for a test ride on our Triumph 675. And in the tuck position, we found it to be very stable, surprisingly stable, even head checking. And I'll also note that one of the other things that jumped out at us that we really liked was we found it to be a little bit more quiet than we were expecting. A lot of times on the race side of things, on the track day side of things, guys are wearing earplugs. Quiet is less of an issue, but we found this helmet to be surprisingly quiet at speed, although it was taking on a great amount of wind in the tuck in an aggressive riding position. Now, if you move down here into the shield side of things, it's using the, Elap the Elliptech system from Scorpion, which is their latest, it is going to be their latest shield change mechanism. And what you'll note is that there's a heavy duty gasket that makes great contact with this shield, which is optically correct. But what you have down here, is a very simple way to change that shield. And I will note as well that all of the R2000s come with a dark smoke shield in the box. So you get a clear smoke shield, or you get a clear shield, you also get the dark smoke shield. And you'll see they actually have this scorpion here. You're actually pushing on the scorpion's tail to move that in and out. And when it comes down, it's going to lock itself into place. And you can see how that works. Moving to the other side of the helmet, you're going to notice there's a city position crack, which allows you to get airflow to defog it quickly. And then there's also a lock position as well. So there's my crack position, and moving it up is my lock position. Scorpion does for around 30 bucks sell separately a flat style race shield that has pin lock 
It has a pin lock mechanism as, long, as well as tear off posts. If I had to nitpick, I would have loved to have seen this race oriented helmet come with that race oriented shield. But again, you can't have everything if you're going to come in under that $400 mark. And last up, up here, right along the forehead, you're going to see the Scorpion logo, which is only held on with double sided tape. So it's completely removable and there's no hole in the outer shell. So you can pull that bad boy off if you want. Now, moving into the guts, let me throw my donut over here. You're going to see that it is an improved liner system moving into the XOR2000, especially here with the neck roll, which is meant to provide a great seal. It's almost this double walled construction. You're seeing an emergency cheek pad removal system. Now I'll tell you, I found that this chin pad or this this chin curtain was a little bit clunky, but that's, I mean, again, I'm nitpicking here. If you open it up though, you're gonna see that there is the air fit system. And I'll tell you that when Scorpion first started designing the R2000, a lot of the racers weren't sure about the air fit system. And then as the development process went on, and as they spent time in some prototypes that had it, they began to gravitate towards the ability to fine tune, really not the crown of the head, not the dual density EPS liner, but really just the way the cheek pads fit through this pump style design. There's your release right there. And you can see here, even with this cheek pad removal system, how everything comes apart and it's tied in in such a fashion that it's integrated. Now, when we went out and rode in this, and remember, I'm gonna frame this out with the standpoint that this is a gateway drug on the premium helmet side of things, you know, but I'll frame it out and say, the Quick Wick 2 interior liner is nice, it's comfortable against the skin, it wicks really well, but what we found was that it still leaves a little bit something to desire if you're gonna compare this helmet to some of the premium models from Shoei or Arai. And again, it's, there are always going to be trade-offs when you decide the level of investment that you're going to make, but I would say this guy is much more akin to something like the HJC Arfa series, which would play right in the same pool around the same level of investment, and we're a fan of the XO R2000. We like it much better than we like the Arfa, the Arfa 10. Now, if I begin to pull out my comfort liner, and remember, as I said earlier, one of the reasons they were able to make the profile of this helmet as low profile as it absolutely is, is because they are using four shell sizes and six EPSs. Here, let me get my brow clip completely removed there. There you go. One of the things that I like that I talk about a lot is the fact that it's a 3D comfort liner with great ventilation built into it, but the connection points aren't at the brow or they're not at the forehead. They're actually at the brow via plastic, so you're never getting any pressure points towards the front and then moving around towards the back, you're going to see that they're in a very easy low profile spot down below the neck roll. And you can see that quick wick two liner system, again, wicking antimicrobial, going to flow a ton of air. Now looking at the helmet itself, we did talk a lot about ventilation. We talked about some of the dual channel design from these interior vents, from these exterior vents that flow to the inside. And you're going to see a lot of the great channeling through this helmet, tremendous from the front to back. And then as you start to work your way to the back, remember there's 10 exhaust ports out of the back. So again, you're getting tremendous venturi effect that's going to pull air actively out of the helmet and keep you cool at speed even in the warmer times of the year. Now when it comes to the safety rating, remember it's DOT, it's going to be Snell rated and I would imagine that Scorpion releasing this helmet when they are is probably going to future proof it so when we see this Snell standard change again, Scorpion should probably be able to just coast right on through without having to update this helmet physically which again they tend to be pretty forward thinking when it comes to stuff like that. So remember, the next step in your journey is to click right here, read other rider reviews at RevZilla.com. You don't have to take my word for it, but we did like it when we took it out and rode it and put it through its paces. It remains to be seen when the hardcore racer takes it to the track and spends a summer in it, but we'll have to get back to you. Make sure you read other rider reviews on our site as well to fill in the gaps in that knowledge. As always, we'll ship for free, and if you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown of the new Scorpion XOR2000. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.